Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Astrology is just so cool. You can learn about your life, where you're going in life. It's basically my understanding and belief is that it's a timeline of your life and it's determined by the stars and everything else that goes into astrology. And when you get a reading, it's very interesting, impactful, insightful. Been there, done that. But not this way, because then you add somebody who's also a licensed social worker who can even direct you further. And not only that, but she's a teacher, she's an author, and she's amazing, and she's back with us. Carmen Turner Schott. Hi. Andy, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, Steve? (laughs) Really well, really well. And we're going to delve into something I've heard a lot about. Not really sure what it is. The 8th and 12th house. And I know that you're big on that uh, yes. in, in your in your teachings and your learnings. You kind of put a microscope on that. Tell us why that is. Yes. So when I started studying astrology, it was really to validate my own spiritual and unexplained experiences. So when I was 16, you know, no one could really explain to me why I would dream things that would happen or I had these intuitions, so to speak, these um, empathic abilities. And so when I did my chart for the first time, I realized I had a lot of planets in the eighth and 12th houses in a birth chart. In astrology, there's 12 houses, which represent areas of life. And and so there's career, there's health, there's work, there's family. But the eighth and 12th are very special because they're the spiritual houses. So for instance, let's talk about the eighth house. The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio, the planet Pluto. It's all about healing, death, rebirth, transformation, changing who you are emotionally, mentally, physically throughout your life. There's a lot of um, people that have planets there that go into psychology, therapy, healing work, like Reiki, pranic healing, and they really want to help people heal. And they also go into detective work like FBI, solving crimes, mysteries, research. And so having planets there there were certain patterns that I saw that people had this connection to lost loved ones. A lot of times they lost someone close to them when they were very young. And because of that experience, they, they went through grief. They learned what it meant to have loss. And they started thinking, what am I here on earth to do? Like, why am I here? And it makes them spiritual. It, it forces them to look at, I'm a soul. There's a reason I'm here. And they use those abilities and their gifts to help other people. So they become counselors. They attract people that have a lot of pain because they're really good at listening and helping people. So if you have the sun, the moon, which are your main identity and emotional nature in the eighth house, I call people an eighth house or or what I call a phoenix. Uh, Eighth house is associated with phoenix energy. And as you know, phoenixes rise from the ashes. They reborn, they change who they are, and they heal, and they grow through traumatic situations. And so that's why um, in my book, Phoenixes and Angels, I call these two houses uh, what I call them. And so eighth house people are very deep. They're very um, into connecting with people on a very deep level, intimacy-wise. And they have these unexplained psychic experiences. These spiritual gifts is what I call them. And I've been researching that these two houses for 30 years. And so as a counselor, as an astrologer, I've seen these patterns um, with planets in the 8th and 12th. And so as we look at the 12th house, it is ruled by Pisces, which is the mystic, the spiritual sign of the Zodiac. It's ruled by the planet Neptune, rules that area of life. It's the house of cosmic consciousness, oneness with God. Uh, serving others, escapism, dreams, sleep, all of these spiritual abilities, empathic abilities, and people that have the sun or moon there or have a lot of planets there, which I call a stellium, which is three or more, they, I call them angels. And that's because they, they always tell me they feel like they're not from earth. You know, when they're little, they feel like they are from another, another world that they're adopted. You know, they tell me they don't, really connect with everyone in their family because they're so different because they're born believing in angels. They're born believing in um, dreams and they dream things and they sleepwalk and they have these intuitions and no one can explain it. Right. And so I started studying these two houses because of my own experiences, number one, and then helping others just seeing these patterns and trying to relate it to them that, Hey, you're not a victim. 
you have these abilities because of your chart, your birth chart, your astrology chart, and it's a tool and a map of your soul. And let's use that as a, as a way to help you validate why you have these things happen to you. And then also, what are your strengths? What can you tap into to help other people? And so that's kind of how my research came on the eighth and 12th houses and why I wrote my newest book that just came out, Phoenixes and Angels, um, Master of the Eighth and Twelfth Houses. Oh, and wow. uh, I um, I have to tell you, Carmen, you just, I'm a, I love astrology, big believer in all of it. I've had readings before, before we met, and they were all spot on. You just sucked me back in like, because I'm wondering where I I sit in the 8th and the 12th. I don't have an idea. For me, uh -huh. it's pretty clear. I would never reveal it to you because if you, I would love to see what you come up with at some point. Sure, sure. As we as we start, you know, getting to know each other better. Yeah. 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 And is it is it reasonable to say that out of all the houses, the 8th and the 12th are the most important, most impactful in your opinion? In my opinion, they're the most important houses in astrology. And that's because they bring deep change, mm. healing, transformation, and growth. And I'll be honest with you, people that have 8th and 12th house planets, they go through life experiences that some people will never go through. And they live through them, and they become stronger, and they become wounded healers is what I call them. And I even started Facebook groups um, about these two houses specifically uh, because they're the water houses. And so in astrology, there are three water houses, the eighth, twelfth, and the fourth. But with the fourth house, it's more about home and family and more about, um, you know, focusing on that, where the eighth and twelfth are more about these deep mystical experiences. And, and most people, unless you have something happen to you that's unexplained, it's hard to explain it to other people and get people to believe you. And, and because I've lived these things, I've, I've experienced the eighth and 12th houses because I have planets in both. I have used that to help other people and to teach and to write and to try to make it really basic. Like when I talk about astrology, I want to make it so simple and basic and psychological that people perk up and they want to learn more because it's not, it's not like what you read in the horoscope in the newspaper. It's so much deeper than that. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I'm seeing that now. I mean, I knew it was, but this, yeah. you're giving us the understanding how deep this can roll. Um, is everybody in the 8th and the 12th in some regard? Yeah, that's a good question. So everybody asked me that, you know, what if I don't have planets in the 8th or 12th? I get that asked a lot. So another thing we want to look at is, do you have a lot of Pisces energy, planets in the sign of Pisces in your chart? Do you have Scorpio planets, like a Scorpio sun, a Scorpio moon? Because you're going to be a phoenix and angel if you do, because it's the energy of those two signs that rule those two areas of life. And also, we if you don't have planets there, we look at what sign is on the cusp of those houses. And we analyze your personality and those two areas of life based on what sign is on that house. So I can look at, for instance, Aries on the 8th. I have Aries on the eighth house. I happen to have planets there. Let's say I didn't. I just have Aries there. That whatever sign is on your eighth house is who you're very strongly attracted to. You have a chemistry. You have a, an energy connection with, with that energy of that sign that's on your eighth house. And I see this a lot. And also, I can say, you know, even so much so through my research, whatever sign is on the eighth house is typically who hurts you. You know, where you have a wound could be from Aries energy, for instance. Someone that has a lot of Aries might be um, someone that, that wounded you where you had to heal as an eighth house person. And, and you're drawn to them because it's, it's, it's a powerful house. So can, we look at that. I, can at, I ask a question right at this point? Yeah. I don't want to lose where we are. Can you astrologically define who those people that may have hurt you are? Like, would, would you come back and say, oh, well, insert name of sign. Yeah, it looks like a blank could have hurt you at some point. Yes, it, it's that accurate. I, I, I'm able to, I just did a class. I taught about 8th and 12th house and I had about 11 people. And, and everything I said about this, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, the people that hurt me, there's two things. They either were that sign, like on my 8th, or 
they have the exact personality traits of that sign. So they had a lot of energy in Aries or Cancer or whatever sign was on that eighth house. And they are like this. How did you know this? I'm like, this is just do my research. This is from client stories that I have gained these awarenesses. So wow. when I look at a chart, I can say, okay, did someone with Pisces energy, you know, um, hurt you at some time and you have to heal that wound? Yes, I had my first love or, you know, people start sharing with me. And, and another thing in a chart that we look at is the nodes of the moon, the lunar nodes. And it's a, it's a point in the sky that astrologers calculate based on the moon. And that shows your soul mission this lifetime is your north node. And whatever, it looks like a little headphones, like a little horseshoe and then an upside down in your birth chart. When you, you can go to astro.com and you can do your own little free birth chart and see this. So the north node, whatever sign it's in is the sign you're meant to master. Like you're meant to become that sign. So if you're a Scorpio north node, you're meant to be an eighth house person, a phoenix. If you're a Pisces north node, you're meant to be an angel. Or if you have the, the north or south node in the 12th or 8th house, you're going to be a phoenix or an angel. So there's a lot of things we look at. Does that mean that you aren't one of those now, 8th or 12th, but you're destined to be just, you know, hold on, it's going to happen at some point? Yes, yes. For mm -hmm. example, I met, I met someone a couple of weeks ago, has their south node in the 12th house. They've already mastered the 12th house. They've in past lives and, and, and their other, you know, um, energies, they've already been an angel. They're meant to learn to be more practical and live in the material world and help people in a practical way, not so spiritual, right? They have to balance this side of themselves because they've already been uh, a monk or a nun or a rabbi or something, right, in a past life. And now they're meant to be a practical service. And so I look at that and, and, and it validates people like, oh my gosh, you know, that's, you're so right. And because we, we feel comfortable in the South Note. That's where we've mastered and that's where we're cozy and we don't want to get out of that because that's what we know. That's like our deeper soul. And we have to move towards the North node, which can be a little bit painful because it's not easy because we don't like it. <laughs> and, and, but as we get older, by the time someone is 61, everyone I've ever met and did a chart for is in the North node doing what I see they're meant to do. It, we get there no matter what the universe gets us there. Right. Um, Question. Right there. Don't mean it. I'm, I'll never cut you off unless there's a, like a reason. Yes. Yes. Isn't that called something when you hit 61? It's a. Well, we have the second Saturn return when Thank we're you. 57 to 60. Yes. That's what it is. And it's um, it's just astrologically. There's one previously. I think it's in your 30s or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. 27 to 30. Yes. Hmm. Uh, interesting. Uh, this is cool. It's all coming clear, but I have to be honest with you here. A lot of this, when it gets deep into the nodes and all of that, that's where I just, I just give, I release it to you. It's too yeah. deep for me. And it's just like, all right, Carmen, just do my chart. <laughs> Tell me what I got to know. And that's yeah. it. I just can't, I, I can't grasp that. Yeah. That's just the way I, I can't, I couldn't use the word can't. I just don't have the, the, the drive to because they're due. <laughs> sure. Well, it, it, it took me, you know, many years to learn all of these things. And, and, you know, I always tell people just start at the basics. You know, you don't have to get really deep into this and you don't have to learn to calculate charts by hand. You know, in the old days, I had to do it by hand because we didn't have computers, you know, so I would draw with a ruler and draw wow. the planets. And, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm getting old, right? I just can't believe that I used to do that because now you just put it in the computer program. It does all the longitude latitude for you. And I can pull charts from all over the world in an instant. But in the old days, we had to do it by hand. And when you go to astrology school to pass certifications, you, you have to actually be able to calculate chart by hand. It's like part of the things you have to do still because uh, they want you to really get it right and understand how how the, the math and the sky is put on a piece of paper. And it, it is a lot of math, but you don't need to know that uh, normal people out there. You just need to know your sun, moon and rising. And a basic understanding of your birth chart will help you so much. And everything that we're talking about, you can calculate just based on date of birth, time of birth, location of birth. That's that's really all yes. you need? Yeah, month, date, year, exact time of birth, and place. Hmm. And, and the reason the time is important is because the planets move through the signs and through those, those areas of life, those 12 sections of the sky. Uh, some planets move quickly, like the moon. 
the moon moves through each sign every two to three days. So if even twins can have totally different moon signs, emotional natures, and you know, if they're born a day apart or four, four hours apart or whatever. And I've seen that. I've seen twins that look exactly alike, but emotionally they're different. Uh, and, I have a twin sister. Oh, cool. Nice. And yes. Yeah, we are very different. Um, 15 minutes apart. And, okay. You know, I, I like to say I'm, I'm more intelligent because I'm older. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yes, very different. And that's where it came clear when I, when I looked at this information, just the basic stuff, how you can figure this out. Yeah. But you're the only person with that information. All of us, there's only one Carmen that was born at that time, on that date, at that location. There wasn't. What are the chances of somebody else? And it's impossible for somebody else to be born at the same time. It's like a fingerprint. Everybody has exactly. a different fingerprint and, and there might be similar energies, but you know, the houses can change. Like your moon might be in the first house and your twin sisters might be right into the second house, which sure. the houses show how that energy is expressed in your life. So it's going to be a little bit of a different personality. And another thing is your soul has had other experiences and other uh, learnings that it's brought into this lifetime. So that's also why twins are different because you're two different souls. You know, even if you had the exact identical birth chart, you're going to be a little bit different. When you say the, uh, is it what's the, at age 61, the second return? Okay. Yeah. Um, so two questions on that. When does that begin? Is it at, as soon as you turn 61, there's the beginning of it? And question number two, is it almost like the second phase of your life? Yes. So, so this is, this is how I explain it. When we're young, we're living in the past. We're not even fully in our birth chart in our mission of why we came here until age 27. And age 27 is the first Saturn return. That's when Saturn, the planet of karma, of discipline, returns to where it was when you were born. It takes it about 27 to 30 years, right? And, and that's when we finally, for the first time, go in, born into adulthood, so to speak. That's when we're, we're challenged, we, we get married, we have a child, we change jobs. I mean, there's research on this. It's amazing. You know, I got married when um, my husband was in his Saturn return. We got married. I had my daughter when I was in my Saturn return. So I see this like 99% of the time with people. And once you go through these really hard things, everyone goes through this at age 27 to 30. When age 31 comes, you feel a weight lifted off and you've, for the first time, you're finally feeling your North Node. We don't even feel the North Node sign or pull till after the first Saturn return. And that's when we change. That's when we start, you know, what are we here to do? What's our mission? And we start, the universe naturally guides us to where we need to go, but we can resist. So what happens is by the time you're 57, you have your second Saturn return. And by then, if you're not doing what you're meant to do, you're forced to do it. And I see this, either you're in it and you mastered it beforehand and you listen to all of the things that life, you know, all of the experiences that came to get you where you are. And by the time you're 61, when you're done with that second Saturn return energy, you are doing your North node, which is your soul mission. I've never met anyone that's not. And they're like, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. I already went through all that. I'm doing this now because I know I'm meant to. And I'm like, this is great. Like I've done charts for people that are 90, uh, 70, you know, 80, and they're in their node. And they told me that during that second Saturn return is when, they finally, it's like they finally are in their mission, what they came here to do. So you're right. It's like a second, a second life, you know? You're freaking amazing. Thank you. There's no other way to describe it. And I'm writing down, not even kidding, uh, <laughs> 27, 31, and I'm trying to go back and apply it to my life. And in yeah. when I was 27-ish, I met uh, my ex-wife. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and this, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not giving you anything, Carmen. If you read me. Yeah, I, I don't have your chart. I mean, I don't, I haven't seen I'm it. Give it yeah. all to you, but I'm, I'm not feeding you anything. But all I'm going to say here is what you're saying is totally resonating. Yes. And I, and, and you're, I don't want to say this so far, because I know when you do the chart, if you do a chart on me, it's going to be spot on. But everything you've said so far is very clear and in by my estimation looking at life and others and and put it all together 
it's spot on. All of, like you just yeah. said, you know, you've never met somebody who um, didn't experience the second return. They were forced to, uh, even the ages. I'm just looking at 31, and I'm trying to figure out what that might be. You know, what was going on at that point? Um, hmm. It's amazing uh, how many people I meet, you know, that get married, have their first child, change their career. I, I, got, I already got it. I, I got it. it. You know, 31 is a year. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it could be at the very tail end. I sure. would have to say that my daughter was conceived during the sad return yeah 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 it's it's very well, cool. okay so i got married so i met my ex got met during the saturn return right the there. age group yeah the age uh, time and, yep. and you know daughter conceived not born yet during the sure. return sure but, yeah uh, it's, all, it's all there yeah, you know, there are there are some that could turn around and say, "Oh, come on, Carmen." You know, most <laughs> people get married around twenty-seven, and blah blah blah. Um, but it's the same thing as a Mercury retrograde. You know, people yes. could say, "Come on, yeah." But then I say, "Why do those things happen during a Mercury retrograde? Why do things go awry? Why do you have communication issues? Why do That's people right. stop your life?" Yeah, la 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 la. Why is it during that period of time? Why not outside yeah. of that? So that it's yeah, it's energy. It, it's yeah. energy. Everything is energy. If the moon can affect the tides of the ocean, of course, it affects our emotional nature. All of the planets are in our solar system for a reason. They have an energy. They affect us. And, and regardless if people believe or not, it's energy. That's all you need to know. I mean, it's a science. It really is. It's been around since yeah. ancient times. Ancient, ancient civilizations used astrology for crops to eat, to plant. To, to know what to do. I mean, it, it helped them survive by knowing the stars. Really. And it's, that goes back so far, and guess what? 2023, and we're still talking about it. There's a reason. If it yes. was just bunk, it would be like, it, it would be long gone. It would be in the dust. Yeah. We wouldn't even be bringing it up. Um, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. And now I got, uh, I've got the clear picture of the 8th and 12th. And that's what makes you so unique is, You've got more of an emotional connection to all of this. Many astrologers, and there's nothing wrong with that, will just spit out the facts and that's it. You're more invested in it because I believe of who you are as a social worker. Yeah. And you make it so clear to understand. Because a lot of times I'll be sitting there, mm -hmm. I'm all set, let me hear what the astrologers yeah. say, and I'm like, glazed over. Well, <laughs> you make it clear. Exactly. Thank you. I, that's, that's kind of my mission. That's my node in the third house which is bringing high level knowledge to a basic level. So anyone can understand I'm meant to be a teacher and teach this stuff in a simple way. And that's what I'm doing. I'm in my node. I'm trying to be in my node. So it's not, so I'm easily, I'm not having any unexpected, you know, painful. I, I'm trying to live my node. And uh, uh, are you yeah. big in, in the eighth house? Is that, is that big for you in your chart? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I got a lot of stuff there. I lost a friend at age 16 from an accidental gun shooting. I've had a lot of loss in my life. I've lost a lot of people close to me, a lot of friends and family and just some really unexpected things that happened in my life that the eighth house planets I have totally validated why. And, and so I'm meant to help people with grief. I'm meant to help people heal because I've lived through those unexpected traumatic life things, you know, everybody and everybody, everybody loses someone at some time. I mean, it's life, right? Birth and death, that's eighth house. But when eighth house people experience it, it's usually when they're younger and it affects them in a very deep way and it changes them. And that's what happened to me. And so people write me from all over the world and ask me, Carmen, I got, you know, the moon or the sun in the eighth and I lost my father. I lost my mother when I was three. You know, they share their stories with me. And I've even been on podcasts where people have read my books, you know, about the eighth house son. And they're like, my mother died when I was born. I never knew my mother. And, and all these things have validated my research. And that's why I wrote Phoenixes and Angels was really to share those stories from people all over the world. And then my own stories of my own unexplained experiences and that people aren't alone. You're not crazy. There are reasons that we go through and have these mystical experiences. They're called spiritual gifts, really. You were meant to help people understand. Thank you. That's it. That's that. That was your. <laughs> that's your purpose in life. What's going on? Why does this happen? There's reasons yes. for it. Again, backed up by science. For those that don't don't believe in any of this, uh, you were meant to help people understand. Um, how do we find you, Carmen? 
Yes, you can go to my website, www.carmenturnershot.com, S-C-H-O-T-T. You can find me on Facebook, Carmen Turner Shot author, Carmen Turner Shot on Instagram, um, author. And I also have a YouTube channel, which is my name, Carmen Turner Shot. You can subscribe and, and get notifications. Uh, love for you to follow me on social media. Go to my website and, um, and look at my books. I have several books out there. Um, I have nine books. But my most recent is Phoenixes and Angels, which is my one of my favorites. There's a lot of answers in that book alone. And uh, even for me, a lot of this is coming clear. I'm not giving you nothing. I know. I don't. I, listen, I, you're like a Virgo. A yeah, we're Virgos. We, we're pretty, pretty private. So well, because I, I'll give you anything, but I don't want to give up anything before you. Um, I'll validate what you give to me because I know what it. I know what you're going to tell me. Yeah. Because of what we just talked about. And it's, yes. it's, it's, I understand it more now, even more. And somebody has t talked about uh, in the past a few of these things, but now you've made it crystal clear. Um, fascinating talking with you. You too. Really Thanks is. for ha having me on here. I, I, I would say that you definitely have something eighth and 12th or Pisces Scorpio energy if you, because you do know basic astrology. You know quite a bit about astrology. So you're interested in these things. So I would say you've got some eighth and twelfth house planets or some Pisces and Scorpio somewhere in your birth chart. And I guess we'll I know, find I, out. I know and I know where they are. I really yeah. do, based on what you just said. And I know the reasons why, based on what you just said. And uh, maybe if you, you know, uh, calculate it for me and then I'll validate it and I'll tell you everything. And, sure. and all of that. We'll give it up maybe next time. But uh, sure. great having you here. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.